Hey guys, this is Brian at Obedia, and I've got a really cool tip for you today in Personas's Studio One 2 Digital Audio Workstation. This is a really awesome feature that usually you would need to get a third-party plugin to do in, uh, in a lot of other audio workstations, but this is something that we can do very quickly and easily in Studio One, and that is drum replacement. Now you can go out, you can get a plugin that'll do this for you, and there's plenty of really cool ones, but let's say you want to do this using only plugins and tools that are available to you in Studio One. Let's go ahead and show you how we can do this. So, you know, sometimes you want to beef up your drum recordings. You like what you got recorded, but you want to add, you want to add a little extra something. So I've got a kick drum that I recorded here. It sounds pretty good. It's pretty punchy. I like the sound of it. I've been EQing it and I like it. But I'm going to go ahead and use this as an example in our tutorial here in order to show you how I can add a little bit extra something to kind of fatten up that kick a little bit, or even if I want, entirely replace the sound. So I have my channel strip opened up here for my kick. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new gate to my channel strip. So I'm just gonna click on the add button right here and I'm going to scroll and I'm going to find my gate. Okay, so now I've added a gate. Now the job of a gate, very simply, is to only allow certain sound through based on a threshold, which we set as to when the gate will open and when it will close. So we're gonna make use of that tool just a little bit later here, but for now, I'm gonna close the gate up. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new instrument track. So I'm going to click on track and select add instrument track. This will add a brand new instrument track to my project. Now, I'm going to browse my instruments. And in this case, as I say, I'm going to use tools that are available to me in Studio One. So I'm going to use the Sample One sampler here in Studio One. So I'm gonna drag that and drop it onto this instrument track. So now I have Sample One opened up. There's no samples preloaded on it but I can load a sample very easily onto sample one. I can simply drag and drop a new sample. I can also add a new sample by using the add function in sample one, but whichever works for you is just fine. So now I have this new distorted drum sound and it's currently mapped across the entirety of sample one. So that's useful but what I am going to be doing is triggering one specific sound here in sample one. So I'm gonna make a couple quick settings. First off, if you look in the top of sample one, you're going to notice that you have a few controls that you have access to. You can change the root note of the sample that you have loaded in sample one, and then you can change the low note and the high note. Now, what this means I can do is I can dedicate this drum sound to one specific note on the virtual keyboard in sample one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click into the low slot right here and I'm going to type C3. And now in the high slot, again, I'm gonna click and type again C3. So now what I have done is I have restricted this bass sample, this bass drum sample, to only C3 in sample one. Now the reason that I'm doing this is because later on I'll show you how we can replace more than one drum in Studio One using only one virtual instrument. So if you're only going to be replacing one drum, you don't really need to, to do what I just did where you can select a root note and a low note and a high note. But if you wanna be able to do some more extensive replacement, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do that. So um, now that I've done that, I, and I know which note is assigned to my bass drum, I'm gonna go ahead and close up my sample one. Now I'm gonna go back into my kick channel and I'm going to open my gate by simply double clicking on it. Now this is where we get to actually set up the actual triggering that we're going to use for triggering the sample. You're going to notice that in the top right hand corner of my gate, there's a trigger section. By default, that is not active. 
Oh, if I, if I click on the button right here, now the trigger is going to be active and you'll notice that in the top right hand corner, it's going to tell me what note the gate is going to be triggering. In this case, it's C3. And it also allows me to change the velocity if I would like to. I'm going to just leave that at 100 because I think that that should be just fine. Now, my next step is to scroll over and take a look at the channel strip for the sample one track which I created earlier. You'll notice that currently the instrument output is set to sample sample one. The input is set to all inputs. However, if I click on this, I get a pull down menu. And in this pull down menu, you'll notice all my gates are currently listed. Now you can name your gates and this is not a bad idea when you're going to be running a lot of different gates and when you're going to be doing replacement. I know that gate number five is the one that I assigned to my kick drum, so I'm going to click on gate number five. What this means is that gate number five is going to actually trigger the sample one track, which I created earlier. So now that I have done that, let me show you how this can work. Okay, so I have my gate opened up and I'm going to start playback and I'm probably not going to hear anything immediately coming out of sample one and that's because I'm going to have to make some adjustments to the open threshold specifically of the gate but let's go ahead and start playing there you go you can hear it already starting to come in a little bit so let's hit play and change the threshold of the open part of the gate And there you go guys, you can see already that I am sending the gate data out and into sample one, which is triggering the instrument which I placed onto channel, which I placed onto C3 in sample one. So if I go ahead and I open up my sample one and I hit play. You see right there, C3 is being triggered immediately by the data which is being sent out of my gate. And all I really did was open up the, the threshold of my gate real wide, the opening threshold, and then I fooled around a little bit with the closing threshold. And you'll want to tool around with this to really find the right sweet spot because this can be different based on the audio which you've recorded and various things like that. But this is a pretty good replacement. So now if I play back, I can altogether mute my kick drum and hear just the replaced kick. So there you go, that's pretty cool, right? And you see how easy it is to do making use of the gate and the sample one in Studio One. Okay, so now let's say that I want to do some snare replacement using sample one and these same methods. The beauty is that I don't need to instantiate another version of sample one. I can use the same sample one instrument which I currently have open in my session. So the first thing that I am going to do is I'm going to add another instrument track. This is going to be just a blank instrument track and you'll notice that when I'm doing my replacement here, I'm basically stacking my track. So I have my original kick track and then underneath it I have my replacement kick track and it would even be a good idea to rename that. Now on my snare replacement track, again I'm going to click into the instrument output pull down and I'm going to select sample 1. Now I know that on my snare track I currently have a gate on this track and this is gate number four now you could add another gate if you wanted to if you already have another gate that's uh, doing specific purposes for you know changing the sound and things like that but I'm just gonna go ahead and use the same gate so on this snare replacement track I'm going to click all inputs and select gate four so now gate four is going to be sending some audio some data out on my snare track and into the instrument track which I created. So I'm going to open the, the snare gate that I have and I'm going to make a new note setting in this gate. I have the trigger section active for it and I'm going to select note D3. So I'm just going to type D3 into the top right hand corner here. This means that D3 is going to be the trigger note 
out of this gate. Now, I'm almost there. The next thing I need to do is open up sample one. And with sample one open, I need to just add a snare sound. I have a lot of different snare sounds in my disposal here. I'm just gonna drag and drop one into sample one. Now currently, this snare sound is going to be mapped across the entirety of my sample one instrument. Now, I don't really want that. I want, again, to assign this snare sound to one specific note in sample one. So again, I'm going to go into the low setting here in sample one and type D3. Now remember earlier, I set my snare gate to trigger D3 as well. My high note, I'm also going to set to D3. So now I have my kick sound on C3 and I have my snare sound on D3. Okay, sample one is pretty much all set now. I can make further changes if I want, but I really don't need to. I'm going to make sure that I have my snare track and my snare replacement track soloed so that I can hear what's going on with them. And I'm going to open the gate four if it's not already open. And now I'm going to start playing back. And again, I'm just going to make some changes on the gate until I start to hear the gate triggering note D3 and therefore triggering the snare sound. So let's play it back. And there you go, guys. It's really that simple. Again, you're going to notice that I have my opening threshold set rather high. It's nearly at 0 dB. In fact, I can probably set it at just about 0 dB, and it should be just fine. And then I made some changes to the closing threshold. And really, again, you're just going to want to start playing back, listening, and making some changes. And you should hear the playback happening pretty immediately. And there you go, guys. You can see I'm already replacing my kick and my snare really, really easily. And I have a lot of control thanks to using the sample one. I can change the effects of these sounds and I can do this all using only one virtual instrument. I don't need to bring in multiple instances of sample one or any other virtual instrument. I can do all of this using one sampler and just being very careful with what notes I assign to what keys and, of course, paying attention to how I have my gate settings set up. So there you go. I hope that you guys find this useful. I think this is a really, really cool trick and something that is just super easy, fun, and quick to do in Studio One. And again, you can do it all in the box without having to use third-party plugins or really any very complex tricks. So there you go. Have fun, use this on your drum tracks, play around with it, find the right settings that you like, and you'll be able to do some drum replacement very quickly and easily in Studio One. As always, guys, I hope you found this useful. Please give us a call here at Obedia, find out how you can work one-on-one -on -one with an audio tutor like myself, and we'll help you to get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software and help you tame your technology, which is what we do best here at Obedia. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next tutorial. Take care. Okay.